Hi, hello there. Welcome to OSPF version 2 basic configuration. So on this video demo, I'll be doing configuration of this given topology here. So if you if you're familiar with the topology, this is the same or exactly the same topology that we used on static routing. So this is a dual stack topology both for IPv4 and IPv6. Okay? So to start with I already have configured the topology with the IP addressing. So to start with, so PC1, we're already configured. Okay. So second usable IP was configured on the PCs. All right. And the first usable IPs were assigned to the uh, router interface or that would serve as the gateway of the workstation. Okay. Now for the routers, Okay, so if you will observe here, so we already have the configuration. Okay, so show IP in brief. All right, so it has already been assigned with an IP address, IPB4 addresses, but we don't have routing here yet. Okay, so that is the coverage of this of video demo. Okay, so I'll show you how to configure this topology using OSPF version 2. All right. So you should have already seen the video regarding the OSPF concepts or OSPF version 2 concepts and the video lecture on OSPF version 2 configuration. So let's start. So basically we need to test first if we have the connectivity. Okay, so on the devices. So sort of we will be doing an end-to-end -end connectivity between two end nodes. So let's start with testing. Okay. PC1 connected to the router, it should be successful, okay, so because we just have configured an IP address on this segment, okay, same thing with PC2 to router 2 and PC3 to router 2, so these are directly connected devices and there should be uh, con connectivity here, All right? so router 1 to router 2 and router 2 to router 3, there is connection okay so but basically we don't have connectivity between pc1 and pc2 okay pc2 and pc3 and so with pc3 all right so it should just be the basic so pc3 to pc1 okay so um, there should be connectivity after we configured routing or spf routing on it okay now to show that we don't have the routing yet so we could just type in here show ip route okay and if you can see we all uh, we only have this uh directly connected networks denoted by c okay so same thing with r2 here okay so r2 set enable show ip route all right so no routing yet on r2 also same true is with r3 okay so enable show ip route all right now to start the configuration okay so for ospf we are uh, configuring only the directly connected networks so let's move on r1 here okay so let us configure R1 for OSPF configurations or OSPF routing. Okay. So if you will observe, let us start with identifying the directly connected networks in R1. And R1 has uh, 172.16.3.0 as the first directly connected network. So this is the LAN for R1. And also we have the second network, 172.16.2.0. So these two directly connected networks are the ones to be defined on our OSPF routing. So let's start. So on R1, so that would be configure terminal. Okay, so we start uh, We start with router OSPF and then one, all right? So, and then network, you've got 172.16.3.0, right? And then followed by the wildcard mask, which is 0.0.0.255.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0
since this is slash 24 here. Okay, and then area zero. Okay, so area zero is being used if we are not given an area here. So considering that this is a single area and that's automatically an area zero or a backbone. All right, so that would be our first network. Okay, so the next one would be we have to define 172.16.2.0 here. So that would be network 172.16.2.0. Right, wildcard mask, that's last 24. So you've got 0.0.0.255. Zero, dot zero, dot zero, dot area 0 there. All right, so we are done with the configuration of OSPF version 2 on R1. So that's how simple it is to configure the basic OSPF version 2. All right? So showing the routing table. So do show IP route here. So we cannot see yet an OSPF because we don't have yet the connectivity with R2. So there should be neighbor adjacency amongst this OSPF router. So for now, we are just done with R1. All right? Now let's move on to R2, okay? So let's configure R2 here. Now referring to the topology given, so we have three directly connected networks in R2. So these are 172.16.1.0 slash 24, 172.16.2.0 slash 24, and 192.168.1.0 slash 24, okay? So we need to define it on R2, so let's do it. So configure terminal, okay. So router OSPF one, okay. Network. Let's start with one seventy two sixteen two zero here. So one seventy two dot sixteen dot two dot zero. So subnet mask is slash twenty four. So therefore wildcard mask would be zero dot zero dot zero dot two five five area zero. Okay. Next, let us define the LAN on R2, which is 172.16, right, that 1, okay, that 0, okay, so that would be 0, that 0, that 0, that 255, area 0. Now, if you will observe here, so during our configuration, we already had an adjacency, so that means... Okay, so this 172.16.3.0 is now synchronized with the network. Okay, or this R1 here is already synchronized with R2. Okay, specifically for the directly connected networks that were already defined. So we are not yet done. We are just defining 172.16.1.0 here. Right? So let us define the third network. Okay, so which is 192.168.1.0. So let's do it. So network 192.168.1.0. Wildcard mask would be 0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.255 area 0. Alright, so that is our configuration for R2. Okay. Now, since there is already synchronization between R1 and R2 here, okay, so we could now see that 172.16.3.0 is now visible on R2. And so, 172.16.1.0 is now visible on R1. So, let's check that. On R2, do show IP route. Okay, so you can see here, you've got an O which stands for OSPF, okay? And from R2, we can now see the network 172.16.3.0, which is the R1 LAN, okay? And that is via 172.16.2.1, all right? So the next hub interface here. So see, that's how easy it is to configure OSPF. We just have to define directly connected networks, all right? Okay, so also, you'll have here 110. This is the administrative distance of OSPF routing protocol. Okay, and 65 here 
is the cost. So how did we get this 65? So from the visual lecture, okay, on OSPF, right? So the, the cost between R1 and R2 is 64, okay? And the cost from R1 to reach this PC1 here, this is using a Giga Ethernet, that is one. So 64 plus one is 65 in there, all right? So now let's go to R1. So we are expecting that we should be able to see 17216 1.0. Let's do that. Okay, so if you will observe again, we have this notification, all right, or synchronization uh, notif. So let's see that. Do show IP route, all right? So from here, we can see here that we have 17216 1.0 here, okay? And also, we can now reach 192.168.1.0 since we already have configured this for R2, right? So going back to that, R1. So let's evaluate first the first uh, 172.16.1.0 network here. So again, you've got 110 for SPF here and 65 is the cost. Right, so this is the cost to reach 172.16.1.0. Okay, so 172.16.16.2.2 uh, okay, would be our exit interface or the exit uh, next up IP address. Right now, again, 65 here is 64 plus 1. Okay, now to reach 1.0, you've got this 64 plus the LAN here, which is 165. All right, next. Now let us evaluate 192.168.1.0 here. Now to reach this, we should be traversing 172.16.2.2. Also this interface here. Now observe that the cost is 128. Okay, because this one, the link between R1 and R2 is 64, and R2 to this R3 here is 64. So the cost of getting into 192.168. 1.0 is 64 plus 64, that's 128. All right, so you can check the video lecture on the OSPF concepts and configuration. All right, now let's do the configuration on R3. Now, before that, let's test. There should be connectivity between PC1 and PC2. Let's check that. All right, PC1, PC2, so you've got successful, okay? PC2 to PC1 should already be successful also, right? Now, how about PC2 to PC3? Okay, it is a failure because we have not yet configured R3. Okay, same thing is with PC1 to PC3. Now, let's configure R3 now. So, for R3, so um, let's configure it. So, configure terminal. Right, so router OSPF one network, okay, directly connected networks. Let's start with 192.168.2.0. All right, so 192.168.2.0. Right, so wildcard mask would be 0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.255 area 0. Okay, now I'm going to configure the 192.168.1.0 network and we are expecting after some time it should synchronize with the rest of the routers all right so let's see so network that's 192.168.1.0 area 0 enter okay so we are expecting synchronization here, right? So see that? So we have now full adjacency, okay? So loading to full. So let's check that, okay? So do show IP route. So how many O's are we expecting on R3? All right. So take note that we should be able to see all the network, okay? Remote networks from R3. So these are 3.0, 2.0, and 1.0 here. So we should be seeing three O's. Let's see. OK, 
Okay, so these are the three O's here. All right, so 172.16.1.0, the cost to reach that is 65. 172.16.2.0, the cost to reach that network is 128. And 172.16.3.0, the cost is 129. Okay, so that's 64, right? 64, 64, and then 1, all right? So that is 129, okay? Now, we have now here the full connectivity. So also on R2, okay? So during the show, right? So do show IP route, that would give us O's there. Okay, so two O's. So these are the LAN, okay, on R1 and the LAN on R3. So for R1, we should be seeing three O's also. So do show IP route. You got it there. One, two, three. Okay, now this should be successful now. Let's just double click this. It is successful, All right? And the fourth one, okay, so let's just ping. PC1 to PC3, all right, that is successful. PC3 to PC1, successful, all right. PC2 to PC3 and vice versa, this is successful. So we have now a full synchronization on this topology, all right. So another command that you can use to verify that is via, okay, so say, say exit, show IP protocols, right. Now, with the show IP protocols command, you can see there, OSPF1, all right? So, um, these are the networks, routing networks, all right? So, the default administrative distance is 110. So, you can see it there. Last update, we'll have this, all right? So, the router ID here is 172.16.3.1, okay? So, based on the video lecture, this router would be getting the highest active IP address okay, on the interface on that router. And to check this, so we've got show IP interface brief. So the highest IP address here is 172.16.3.1. That is why we have here 172.16.3.1. All right. So more of the configuration of router ID on the next video. So for now, our objective here, let me just close this. Our objective here is to provide full connectivity on this topology using OSPF version two, right? And we were able to verify OSPF routing using the command show IP route, okay? And also show IP protocols, all right? So you could do the same on R2. Let's do it. Do show IP protocols. Right? So it's using OSPF. Okay. And there's the administrative distance. All right? So that's the end of this video demo. Okay. See you on the next video demo. In there, we will be discussing router ID.